Hey there everyone, I'm Danny, and welcome to this episode of All Monsters Go to Space. Today I'm doing a requested being. Thank you, Pop Rock King of Games, for requesting Ryujin, the Japanese Dragon God. He is a god of the sea and is said to represent the power of this giant body of water. Not much is given in the way of description, other than he has a large mouth and can morph into a human being and other aquatic animals. It is said that he was around at the founding of Japan and is the patron of said country. Most believed that Ryujin is a benevolent deity, and this probably stems from the fact that a lot of the population, for a very long time, had a diet consisting of seafood. It was their sustenance and their trade. This also ties into how different the sea can be. Calm seas and plenty of fish meant Ryujin was blessing you, but he could also go the other way and create tempests, much like when he was said to have made the hurricane that sunk Kublai Khan's flotilla. He is one of the eight dragon kings who also rules over snakes, as a lot of dragons do. They became his messengers as they could go on land and bring him news, and like most water dragons in mythology, he can bring thunderstorms and rain. And it's said in some places that he could enter into a person's dream in that tiny little moment between sleeping and waking up. I don't know if that would be cool or terrifying. In his legends, he is said to live in a beautiful underwater palace made of red and white coral, and he would dwell there using his jewels to control the tides above. He lived in his palace with his daughter, Toyo Tamahime, who was a great beauty, and married the famous mythological hunter, Prince Hori. Their grandson, Jimmu, became the first emperor. Throughout Japan, especially in places where people practice Shintoism, and in rural or coastal places, there were numerous shrines to Ryujin, some of which can actually still be found today. Ryujin plays his part in quite a few legends, so let's start with one that's already briefly been touched upon. In the Kojiki, or the Record of Ancient Things, in 712 CE, Ryujin took the form and name of Watatsumi. Huri was the youngest of his siblings, and he borrowed Hoderi's, his brother's, fishing hook, but this was no ordinary hook. It was a magical one that could catch a large amount of fish at one time. Now that would be very helpful. Huri couldn't make it work though, and he accidentally dropped it in the ocean. As an apology, he brought his brother 500 hooks, but Hoderi refused and was very annoyed. I can kind of understand that one. Huri walked to the beach and cried. An unnamed god came across him and feeling empathy, told him to go to Watatsumi, who could probably help. The anguished young man built himself a boat and set out. Eventually, he reached the palace and was greeted by Tayotama Hime. He was blown away by her beauty, so much so that he actually forgot why he had gone there. They spent time together and fell in love. Tayotama Hime's father allowed them to marry, and many, many years had passed by the time Huri actually remembered his brother in the hook. He told his father-in-law of his mission, and Watatsumi sent out his aquatic animal servants to find the hook. One of the servants found it trapped in a sea bream's mouth. It was returned to the son-in-law, who was then also given two jewels so that he could control rain and sent him back on his way. These jewels also helped him become wealthy and he lived for 500 years. A short tale says Ryujin once stole a magic jewel from Kamatari, the founder of the Fujiwara clan. It was lost to them for a long time until one day, Kamatari's wife swam down to the palace. She managed to return the jewel, but unfortunately lost her life in doing so when she drowned. There is another story that includes this clan. One day, a giant centipede attacked Ryujin's palace. The hero, Tawara Toda, also known as Fujiwara Hidesaso, was a famous archer and took it upon himself to hunt and kill the centipede. His first three arrows bounced off the creature. He took his last arrow and dipped it in his own saliva, aimed and succeeded in killing the monster. To show his gratitude, Ryujin gifted the hero a bell. The bell was eventually left at the Mideri Temple. Another legend actually explains why the jellyfish don't have any bones. Ryujin was working on a cure for skin rashes and required a monkey's liver. He sent out his jellyfish servant. And I am struggling to imagine a jellyfish with bones here. Let me know if you're the same. 
But the jellyfish found a monkey and tried to take him back to the palace. But the monkey knew something was up and told the servant that his liver was in the woods in a jar. The poor servant believed the smart creature and followed him to get it. The jellyfish eventually realised they'd been tricked and had to return empty-handed. Ryujin flew into a rage and beat the poor servant until all their bones were broken. It's a bit mean, really. He was only trying to do his job. The next myth is about the fisherman Yurishima Taro. He was walking along the beach one day and saw a group of kids swarming a turtle. He shoved them away and saved the desperate creature. To show their gratitude, the turtle offered the fisherman a ride to the palace. When he got there, he was treated to a feast prepared by Toyoti Mihime, and as he left, he was given a jewellery box. When he got back home, he became very confused. He couldn't find his home and family, and his whole village looked markedly different. He didn't recognise anything. He stopped an elderly lady and asked her, she spoke of when she was a little girl and a fisherman just like him had disappeared, but that had been decades ago. He despaired and travelled around a little. One day he opened the jewellery box. Inside was a bright light. It eclipsed his vision, and when it passed, his village had returned to normal along with everyone in it. It was as though no time had passed at all. Because of this, Urashima decided to live a better life to avoid the future he had seen. And the last legend I came across is that of the Empress Jingu. She had the two tied jewels in her possession. Japan was being invaded by Korea. The Empress took the jewels and threw one into the ocean, causing it to recede, blocking the opposing nation's warriors from leaving their ships. She then used the other jewel to cause the sea to rise again, flooding said ships and defeating them. Well, that's all I have on this deity. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to be alerted to when we've uploaded a new video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!